So we want to schedule this die graph on three processors using the critical path algorithm. So we'll go ahead and introduce an end vertex. And this is going to be a little tricky to draw here because each of these leads to the end. Notice we have a lot of I sort of independent tasks that can be completed at any time. Uh, and so use applying the backflow algorithm, uh, task 9 here is a distance of 6 from the end. Task 2, uh, so f flowing backwards here, this has a distance of 8 then, as does this, as does this. Uh, and flowing backwards, then, this has a time of 9. Uh, flowing backwards from here, this is going to have a ti critical time of 1, of 1, of 6, and of 6. And so putting that together, we get a priority list of task 1, task... task 1, task 6, task 7, task 8, right? And now we hit the sixes, and we typically give those in order of task number. And so there's all my six uh, y unit time tasks. And then finally, we have task two and task three, which are my one unit time tasks. And so if we go ahead and schedule this on three processors, uh, let's see what happens. And so at the very beginning, notice task 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 are ready. And so we'll go ahead and assign task 1, 4, and 5. Remember, we've got three processors this time. And so we'll go ahead and assign those three tasks. So there's task 1, 4, and 5 assigned, and notice after one unit of time, task 1 gets complete. And when task 1 gets complete, tasks 6, 7, and 8 all become ready. And so now we can just go ahead and assign, uh, task 6. So task 6 gets assigned, and it takes two units of time, taking us out to 3 now. Uh, when task 6 gets complete, uh, then we'll go ahead and assign task 7. And task 7 takes 2 units of time, uh, and that takes us out to 5 units of time. And when task 7 gets complete, uh, then we'll go ahead and assign, I guess, task 8. And so task 8 gets assigned, again, with 2 units of time, taking us out to 7. So now, when tasks 4 and 5 get done, let's see here, tasks 4 and 5 get done, is anything new ready? No. Okay, so I guess we'll go ahead and assign the next thing that is ready on the priority list, and that would be tasks 2 and 3, uh, which you might remember both have a time of 1. So task 3 gets assigned, and let's see here, task, uh, sorry, that one should have been task 2, sorry. And uh, task 3 gets assigned here, and both of those can take till time 7. Uh, and then when task uh, at time 7, when all of those tasks get done, finally task 9 is ready, and we can assign it. Uh, and so we go ahead and assign task 9 here, and that has 6 units of time, which takes us out to uh, 13. And there is our schedule, and of course all of this time here is idle time. And there's our schedule created by the uh, critical path algorithm. Now, uh, this has a f total finishing time of 13, and you kind of have to wonder, could we have done better? And the answer is absolutely we could have done better in this particular case. Uh, and here's the schedule that would do it. Uh, it makes sense here to do, go ahead and do all those time 1 tasks, and then we can do these time 2 tasks, and then we, all the processors can work on the time 3 tasks, and that gives us a completion time of 9. The point being here is that while the critical path algorithm will often lead to a good, very good schedule, it is not an optimal algorithm. In other words, it doesn't always produce the ideal results.